So as you mentioned, we're from Swarthmore College, a very small liberal arts um, school, very similar to the Lamar Cabell group. Um, and we um, launched an iPad Pro project because uh, we saw that there was a huge uh, demand for it uh, amongst our faculty. Um, we wanted to test out um, using iPad Pros with the stylus uh, just to see if the faculty would take it on. And we bought one, and one professor in the modern languages department um, absolutely loved it. He was trying out the stylus, and he noticed that um, the, there was no lag time. And so for him to be able to write the different characters um, on the iPad and then have uh, being able to show them on the screen, um, and he could still walk around the classroom and kind of talk to his students as well, was a huge win for him. So he um, took the iPad, and we never saw it again. So we thought, okay, well, that means we have to buy another one. And the same thing happened. As soon as we got it, um, a biology professor took it and immediately began uh, making flip instruction videos uh, for his class. So that was maybe um, the end of the spring semester. Um, so we thought, you know, maybe if we bought a bunch of iPads and uh, presented them to the faculty, um, maybe for an exchange of being a part of the pilot program, um, maybe we would spark more interest. So we had to hurry up and try to get uh, the approval process going by the iPads. And by that time, it was almost the end of the summer. So, so we didn't have a lot of lead time. Um, so uh, just to show you our timeline here, we sent out an RFP uh, mid-July. Um, by mid-August, we had originally um, anticipated only selecting six faculty. But because there wasn't a lot of time, um, only we only got responses for eight faculty um, because they're busy during the summer. Um, so we said, why not just take all eight? <laughs> so um, we got all eight faculty members. We bought more iPads. And um, by late August, we had arranged, um, well, we set up beforehand that we were going to do some luncheons and some training uh, materials um, and have some sort of informal discussion and then maybe later a more formal discussion for them to present um, in front of faculty. So late August, we had our first training where we kind of demoed a bunch of apps that we had researched and thought that it would be um, very well for them to use. Um, Mid-October, we had an informal luncheon where we kind of just gathered around and everyone talked about some challenges they had or what worked, what didn't work. And we were also able to do some one-on-one -on -one type of training afterwards and during just to talk more about how it's been going this semester. And then um, by the end of the semester, we had the faculty present um, in front of the faculty lunch where they were um, super enthusiastic about the projects that they had been uh, doing throughout the semester. And they presented in front of the new faculty and to gain sparks more interest. So that was our timeline. Um, however, we definitely ran into a few challenges um, as the pilot went on. Um, the first thing that we discovered was the process for deploying the apps. Um, we thought, you know, hey, we could just, uh, ITS has our own um, Apple ID. So we logged in all the iPads as ITS and um, um, uploaded all the apps we thought would uh, work well for them. And so um, the only problem with that was, was when there was an update, they weren't able to update their own apps. And oddly enough, with some of the apps, they weren't able to even use it without doing the update. So we had to take those back, log in, and then update. And we thought, maybe there's a better way to do this. So with the both purchasing iPad um, app uh, license, um, what you can do is you can download codes for the apps. Then we solicited the codes. They were able to log in under their own Apple IDs and do updates as usual. Um, much better experience. <laughs> yes, that they can go around. So, oh, and what we discovered with that is that not everyone had an Apple ID. So <laughs> there was some education behind how to make an Apple ID, what email to use, how to log in, and all that. Um, the other thing we ran into is there really just wasn't a lot of prep time. Because we just thought of this um, right off the cuff, and we were enthusiastic and we wanted to get started right away, there just wasn't a lot of time for them to prep um, for their classes and for us to have a lot of training before the semester actually began. So 
we um, definitely saw that right away. Um, another thing that would have been useful is that we offered plenty of one-on-one -on -one training uh, and we scheduled in those training functions. However, it would have been great if we had maybe some videos to go along with the training so they could go back, just like flipped instruction in the courses, um, they could go back on their own if they forgot something or it's been a while since they updated the app, they could take a look at the video and then be reminded of how to do something. Um, the other thing was they were doing great projects and they wanted more faculty to know that this was a great tool to use in their classes and they wanted us to promote more, maybe come into some of their classrooms, take some video of the students learning, and then um, you know put it on blog posts, post it to the website, so more and more faculty would know. Some huge successes though. We got great, great feedback on a couple of different things that they really enjoyed doing with the iPad. The one was electronic grading. Um, our LMS system is Moodle, and so what they were able to do is download a paper submitted through Moodle, um, upload them to an app, make annotations, um, re-upload them back to Google Drive, and then upload them again to Google. It sounds like a lot of steps, but once you get the process down, it's really quite great and easy for them to make adjustments, just annotate um, electronically. Um, the other thing that they liked was um, wireless projection um, of notes, just continuously writing without being tethered to the podium. You could walk around the classroom. Um, and not have to use the chalkboard or the whiteboard. Um, our faculty love their chalkboards, but <laughs> they were they were really enthused that this um, the pencil was so easy to use um, that they that they were able to compromise. Um, flipped instruction videos. Um, we had a math professor that made like twenty something videos on his own. He didn't have to call in our media services department to connect the Nocto and the microphone and all this. The app was so easy to use that he was just able to swim right through and get a bunch of things done. Um, and of course, there were um, interactive student work where the professors would take the iPad and let the students draw and annotate on it if they really enjoyed being able to uh, work on the iPad themselves. Um, so, and I will let Sunka talk more about that in just a second. But some of the more popular apps that we absolutely uh, love, the faculty love, is of course Google Drive and all the Google Docs, slides, sheets, um, because that was great for uploading um, in storage and collaboration, as well as Dropbox. Um, explain everything in notability where the two tied. They were just, everyone used them, but they were blown out of water by what they can do. And of course, uh, OneNote is another good one for continuous uh, writing and taking notes. And my script memo is it, really cool because it uh, has a very nice um, handwriting to text feature, and it works really well with math equations because I think it translates to a lot of tech. So, with that being said, I want to pass it over to Sun Summers. So, she's going to talk about her uh, digital project that she did with her students. Yes. Um, and thank you, Ashley, very much for the uh, help from, 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 the, um, from uh, Ashley. Uh, the class with them has been as successful, so it's always great to have good teamwork. Um, so uh, I teach in film and media studies, and the introduction uh, in one of our um, sort of weekly topics is how to deal with mise-en-scene. Um, mise-en-scene is pretty much everything that's put into the scene. Um, and one of the fabulous films we use uh, for this purpose is Dr. Serp's uh, 1956 uh, Written on the Wind, or otherwise known as Wow um, in, um, in Hollywood. Uh, and indeed, because it's, uh, it's a uh, Technicolor extravaganza that uh, lends itself really nicely to close a uh, sort of uh, study of a mise en scene. And uh, so uh, basically, what I had for this class was that I uh, broke mise en scene down into the various um, Apple covers, costume, camera, you know, props, uh, the composition of blocking and framing, you know, how our characters block by each other socially, racially, 
gender, uh, sexually, etc. How are uh, they blocking up the other objects in the room? For example, here's a big portrait and, uh, you know, we're collecting the oil well. Lighting, do we have shadows? You know, do we have uh, an on screen and off screen space? Is the uh, on screen space contained? Or do we actually have hints uh, in the middle of the scene that point to off screen that say in horror films, for example, we have a shadow that reaches in from off screen, for example? So all these things the students had to um, uh, had to think about, and so um, I decided to use explain everything, which was really easy. Um, as you can see on the toolbar on the side, um, you can uh, drop in uh, images from your Google Drive. Um, so you can uh, drop uh, in uh, text. You can compose text right there. Um, and so we basically started to talk about very specific scenes. Um, the, uh, the, Getting seen, asking questions about relationships um, of the various aspects of the design together. And then uh, we, I made the students uh, into teams. I uh, divided the class uh, up about how many did I have? 25 into teams uh, of five. And uh, they had to uh, take uh, specific photos that I had uh, shown them on our Moodle, uh, on our Moodle course. <laughs> I had um, you know, uplinked the photos and stills from each of the scenes that I wanted them to look at ahead of time. So each team had designated stills that they were working with, um, and they had uh, the, uh, the, the questions about these aspects. So here I did this basically walking around the classroom and I did it with a stylus while we were sort of gathering what would be important to discuss in this still, specifically as a prep exercise or the group exercise. Here's some people came up with these questions and I jotted them down in life. We have AirPlay and, and Apple TV uh, in our lecture hall, so it was very easy to just put them to the screen. And I was walking around gathering input from them. Um, and then group A got, they got these three stills on Moodle and they got handed the iPad and they were told to then have a discussion about the specific aspect and then present their findings to the class. And so they did the same thing. They were, while they were uh, discussing, they sort of uh, reminded themselves with notes and then um, while they were presenting to the whole class, we flipped the screen to the big, to the big screen again. Um, and uh, they were holding the iPad, some of them for the very, very first time. You know, you always think the students are a generation ahead, not so. Some of them had never even held an iPad. So um, again, ooh, how cool, you know, it made up for a lot. And so they were able to scribble things while they were talking. For example, one of them would, uh, you know, point to this uh, object right here that was of importance. Um, they talked about the colors of the suits matching. Uh, and, uh, you know, him being sort of the odd man out uh, and how that changes over time. We talked about the blue background, the people in the red, how her gaze is cast down but longingly looks at the fruit, but also somewhat anxiously. Uh, we have this clock ticking, right, the biological clock ticking. All these things that came up with, um, and then we had the second group um, doing a similar thing for the car scene and the change um, of the wardrobes. I mean, uh, it is pretty significant in the early forms of the relationships that these two match. They don't match at all, but at the end, you know, she has a brown fur coat and it's hanging over her, and so they all sort of ride into the sunset together. So they came up with these um, things together. The group C kept the what's called the two divas scene and written on the wind, um, and uh, specifically this one is wonderful with a reflection. And uh, they talk about how the mirror functions, how uh, how class and, uh, and sex here uh, it allow her to be much more casual and sort of more familiar in her sort of very wealthy environment. Whether the sort of uh, the one who's marrying into the family has to uphold sort of this formal standards more for um, uh, so you know they got a lot of stuff done. We did the group uh, D, the death of dance, um, uh, the dance of death scene. And specifically focused on the colors, but also how the uh, image here of Mitch, the love object, is sort of foregrounded, uh, and she's actually then dancing with him in her hand. That's him, that's uh, you know, uh, uh, dancing with him as an image um, um, in her hand. Um, and the last group worked on the bar scene, where we really have a sort of um, insertion happening, uh, where they sit together and then he sort of inserts himself into the middle with the dream and how the bottle from the very beginning is sort of, you know, here also the bottle is inserting itself, the alcoholism is inserting itself into the, into the relationship, almost done. 
yeah, and music F worked on score and scoring, um, and uh, so we really had a wonderful way to bring in the students uh, interactively and to uh, utilize the iPad sort of spontaneously for note taking, but also for uh, looking at these things more more carefully and, and uh, closely uh, when they were working in groups of five, um, and then also flipping it to the big screen to hold their presentations to also practice some of this skill. And I was very happy with the way in which uh, I was free to come to the front, which is not the case right now, but with Apple TV and AirPlay, I was able to walk around, I was able to hand the iPad to people. I think it's a great way to uh, to let your students, you know, let's say somebody has an idea to jot it down or um, uh, you know, any way to just write notes. So I, I, was, I was very pleased with it. It was not the only technological thing we did. I also used to explain everything for lecturing and specifically also for PowerPoint. You know, that's an, as an alternative to PowerPoint, it's actually really nice. The notability was really great too. I used that um, just to try it out. Um, and I was very pleased with that as well. So um, especially when this doesn't have to happen, this is a great tool. But if this has to happen, then you know your iPad works uh, except if you get more. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you again, Ashley. Good morning. And I just take it off.